Welcome to DNA Welcome. Live from the kiosk. Here we are one day before Holy Thursday. Day. So in this Holy Week, we all we have all kinds of wonderful things that we'll be speaking with you about. But as usual, to start the show, Father, if you could. My dear brothers and sisters, let us mark us with the sign of our faith, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I'd like to share with you is our opening prayer, prayer from Father Joseph Cain of the Oblates, who, is, who lived from May 12, 29 to 17 September 2017. My dear Jesus, I trust in you. I place myself in your merciful heart, and I ask that your precious blood may flow through my whole being. Let it cover my will that I may be free from wrong choices in the past and stronger in surrendering to you your will for me today. Let your precious blood flow into my mind, conscious and unconscious, that my thoughts may be inspired by your presence. Let it flow over my imagination and memory to rid them of images that are useless. Let it flow to my heart, where love springs up fresh every day, so that the fruits of your Holy Spirit may be manifested in my sharing with others. That is, patience, kindness, joy, fidelity, and courage. Finally, let your precious blood flow through my spirit, which was created to your image and likeness, so that I will have health of spirit and of body. Amen. Amen. Mother Amen. Mary, cover me with your mantle and love and protection in this day. Amen. We make Amen. this prayer, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. See you in a bit. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Father. <laughs> so exciting day today. And what, what do we have here? Well, we believe it or not, we still have the first class relic of St. Faustina Yay! for one more uh, week, which is great. St. Faustina, pray for us. And, and suddenly I have this beautiful candle. What, what's the story behind this candle? Well, Father's going to share. Oh, oh he's my. He's going to share about that. Okay. So, oh, so much to talk about, but of course, let's not forget that this Friday, the Novena for Divine Mercy begins on Friday. Yes, so, yes, and I yes, think yes. You're, you may be speaking about that as well. So that's really, really important. And this show really is going to be emphasizing also just the gift of the priesthood, yes, too, which yes. is amazing. So uh, we've got two wonderful guests that are going to illustrate that as well and then i'm looking forward to speaking with father tim who is such a gift to us as well yes anything else on your end or i think that's good to go we're going to meet our special honored guest coming up very soon and i'll see you later all right our first guest is carol Sorry. <laughs> I do it right there? yeah we're okay i'll just uh same for everything's fine okay hey carol how are Hi, you Dennis. hello how's this this that's perfect. So we've known Carol for a while, and it's funny because somebody th this morning said, "Oh, Carol, Carol, who is everywhere, Carol." Yes, that's true, <laughs> and and I mean that in such a, a beautiful sense because if you want to learn a little bit about missionary discipleship, I'd say that you're just such a beautiful example of that. And I thought it'd be great to just have you on and maybe to to share with us and our viewers e even how you started being inspired to be a missionary disciple. And, and where it all kind of began. I know that was a few years ago, so so share. Great, um, and all praise and honor and glory to God who gives us the opportunity to share and to be obedient and to be available. Yeah. And um, sometimes I haven't always been available, uh, but about 20 years ago, I had the um, fortune of ending up in a place called St. Malo, Manitoba, where there's a Catholic school of evangelization mm -hmm. and became involved with the parish. And this was just before the Jubilee, the great Jubilee. And so the young students there were on fire and I had a mm -hmm. desire also to be carried with them and, and to invite them um, on my journey. And I experienced a healing there through one of their Wednesday evening prayers. A healing. A of healing. What? Of what? Complete healing of my sciatica. Wow. And so praise, praise, yeah, the Lord. praise the Lord. And I had been baptized in the Holy Spirit um, through the charismatic renewal a number of years ago. So I was open right. to whatever would happen. And uh, that happened. So praise God. And also the priest um, was having 40 hours of adoration from Thursday to Saturday. So I you mean said, in a row? In a row. So wow. they're every every week. So it's your date with Jesus every week. So wow. I jumped in and I said, okay. So between four and five in the morning, um, I would make my holy hour at the parish, and the priest would make his at six. So the people that came uh, 
came from outside of that town. Okay. I was living outside of, of St. Malo at the time. And uh, I just asked the Lord, you know, I'm here in the middle of nowhere. I never expected <laughs> to be in Manitoba. Right. Um, how am I going to do your work? How am I going to be available? And previously, I had been exposed to the Eternal Word Television Network. EWTN e for short, right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, they're the global right. um, largesse. And yes. I'm just, um, you know, a, a person who's being baptized and yeah. trying to live out that call. Sure. And the town itself at that point had cable, but of course EWTN wasn't on the cable station. So through the parish and the school, we encouraged the television station and they did take it on. And that was in 2002. So the people in the nursing home, the people in the rural community had access to good Catholic teaching. Yes. And the parish secretary at the time had never been on a bus, a train or a plane. And where was she going in 2000? Where was the World Youth Day? In Rome. Mm. So all of this was, you know, a precursor to how the Lord was working in that community. They're celebrating 25 years of that Catholic school. They have a grotto to Our Lady of Lourdes. Now, where were you at when all this was happening in terms of your own faith? Like, were you already engaged in all of this? Or what kind of drew you into all of that? Um, it was really the example of the students. Their desire to mm. know the Lord, to put it into practice, to really live it. Um, they came for a year. They gave up a year of their life. Wow. Um, the priest there had a desire to encourage proper catechesis. I got involved with uh, teaching oh, um, a couple classes for the students who were in an after-school program. I was reading at the church. And, of course, with the Jubilee year, um, there was just that excitement and looking forward to how the Lord could open doors. Wow. Um, so it was really a time of just being available and putting myself um, at his uh Disposal? His disposal. <laughs> Thank so you. So did you feel like you were going deeper yourself, just in your desire to maybe pray more? Uh, adoration, I take it you were probably going to some of the adoration times? Um, definitely. Like my holy hour was every Saturday from 4 to 5. and In the morning? In the morning. Okay. Saturday, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I had heard that during the night hours, those are the most efficacious oh, um, to okay. pray for. And I was praying for the priest needs as well because he was trying to support the school and of course the community there's always lots of issues happening in the community sure so um i felt i didn't have to do anything big and grandiose but right. just be available mm -hmm. and just go and ask the lord and beg the lord for however he wanted to show his mercy and his graces and so how did he like going moving forward from there how did he kind of lead you and what were some of the next steps i guess that um took place? so shortly thereafter i found myself in edmonton uh, still out west and i met a priest called father raymond guimont who was preaching on monday nights at saint john the evangelist on mané d'obiscum and that was his day off and I was really that's an encyclical, an in, uh, apostolic letter oh, at that letter. point, and that means, um, Lord, stay with us. And he was a very Eucharistic oriented priest. He started adoration again at St. John the Evangelist, oh, built a little chapel. So I was really drawn um, to participate. So again, I was attending adoration. He loved the Blessed Mother, and I mm. was growing in my love of the Blessed Mother, had prayed the rosary. But to, just to see the priest who was so jovial and willing to give and to be available. Right. And so that's how I was growing in, you know, learning um, that I could respond right. to Blessed Mother and just... So did you have any kind of particular, when you say respond, was there certain ways that you felt that I want to respond in this way or like how did that? Um, so Father Guimont, um, being he was a great preacher, uh, we invited him to come to the Marian Eucharistic Congress in Winnipeg in mm. 2003 because he's a Canadian priest. Mm -hmm. and. The woman who was organizing it invited a lot of speakers who you would know from EWTN. Okay. And so he drove from Edmonton um, on his motorcycle with the Blessed Mother on his cowling. <laughs> wow. uh, 
invoking her protection. And we also uh, encouraged an artist from Edmonton to paint the vision of St. John Bosco. Oh, so beautiful. he was very instrumental. Maybe for our viewers, you can explain what that vision is because it's remarkable. Um, the vision is the Holy Father on the front of the bark of Peter. And he's going between the Eucharist on a, on a pillar. He's going between these two pillars. Right. And so with all the turmoil in the church, um, it's really that vision to lead us forward, you know, to hold on to the teachings of the church, Holy Mother Church, which I love. Beautiful. And um, to invoke, you know, the Blessed Sacrament mm. um, for our strength and the life that we have as baptized Catholics who right. we feed on on the Lord. And especially being tomorrow night, you know, the institution of the Holy Eucharist and the institution of the Sacrament of Holy Orders. Yes. Um, so priests in the Eucharist are very dear to my heart. So um, that's just a word of encouragement for those who are wondering about tomorrow night. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, again, so you started feeling like you, what um, I, I know you've had a lot of experience. You've mentioned EWTN. So you, you have felt a call to make, I guess, our faith available through different ways. EWTN, I know you've promoted them as a media missionary and, and other things. So what are some of the ways that you exercise being a missionary disciple? Um, so with the uh, evangelization on my own daily, in my own daily walk, um, I've had people who have said to me, um, you know, you look like you're in love. And right. I said, well, yes, I'm in love with Jesus. So we don't have to say a lot. Um, they can see that, you know, you're committed to going to church on Sunday. You don't have to say anything. Um, I've had a lady at the grocery store who told me about her situation with uh, her pregnancy, and she was being asked, uh, well, by her parents to abort the baby. Mm. And I had a picture of Blessed Mother in my wallet. And she's Muslim, and they love Fatima. So I just prayed that the Blessed Mother right. would make herself available, gave her the phone number for the Marian Center. So in terms of being responsive, it's not right. always my plan. Right. But just to know that as Angelina and yourself, you love Blessed Mother, and you just ask her to be with you mm -hmm. and to expose herself to those that are in need. Right. Um, so just incidences on a day-to-day -day basis where people will come up and they will acknowledge that, you know, you're in the middle of a lot of turmoil and there's difficulties and yet, you know, there's something there. Yeah. So you don't have to be really loud. And <laughs> <laughs> um, although the person this morning who said she's everywhere, then it's just maybe a sacrament of presence of being available oh that's beautiful and so hopefully that draws people to a, a deeper relationship with their blessed mother and jesus i also know while well, speaking about encyclicals you do have a, a love for the encyclicals in fact i think you have one that you brought yep uh, let's see i'll just put it there so this is the joy of the gospel and i had the wonderful opportunity of receiving teaching from our bishop christian riesbeck in the fall of 2014 and he was ordained a bishop about four years ago march 19th feast of saint joseph Beautiful. so he was preaching at holy cross mm. and i just He's smiling a lot, and of course he's young, and he's encouraging our young people. And I just found it was such an opportunity, again, to grow in my faith, to be grounded and rooted. Right. And I just wanted to share one or two things, Please, if, yes. I, if I could, because it reminded me, just in the opening, it talks about Pope Francis, who wrote this exhortation, and he just wishes to encourage the Christian faithful to embark upon a new chapter of evangelization marked by this joy. And he talks about the joy being made anew. Mm. And I could see that having looked at my journey right. and, you know, there's ups and downs. And so how do I say, Lord, where can I be that new source mm. of joy right. for, for those that you send my way? Beautiful. So I, I wanted to share that. The other thing um, that struck me through Bishop Christian's uh, teaching 
and especially being tomorrow night, we'll be celebrating um, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Yes. Pope Francis said, let us try a little harder to take the first step and to become involved. Mm. So as I reflect back, I say, okay, Lord, you know, I have a plan, but it's your plan. So just let me take the first step and then he'll lead us the next step. And I've seen this happen in so many different ways. And just to continue on, it says, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. The Lord gets involved and he involves his own as he kneels to wash their feet. He tells his disciples, you will be blessed if you do this. So I have to hold on to right. that blessing that wherever he sends me and the people that he sends me, that I try to be faithful and I try to respond to that joyfulness. And Bishop Christian, he's always smiling when you meet right. him. And he wants to get to know you. And really, he when he meets you again, even though he's meeting so many people, yes. he just seems to reconnect and he gives you that affirmation that you're doing the Lord's work. As mm. a missionary disciple, I feel that about Bishop Christian. Mm. Um, he doesn't have to say anything, but just like Jesus, when Jesus looks at us right. and when he looked at the people that were coming to him who were thirsty, right. you know, the lady that touched the hem of his garment said, oh Lord, if I but, and that was kind of my approach too with the Blessed Sacrament. Oh Lord, if I just but touch mm. the hem of your garment, you know, to bring about reconciliation and healing and just whatever graces the Lord had. So that's a little bit of how I've been touched and tried to respond. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for coming uh, on DNA Live from the Kiosk today and sharing these wonderful uh Wonderful examples, really, that re reflect on the priesthood, the gift of the priesthood, and how the, the priesthood has uh, really affected you and, and drawn you into uh, responding and being involved. And boy, is Carol involved all over the place. But anyways, thank you. God, God bless you. you. God thank love you. you. All right. So we're going to transition to Angelina and Tanya, who yes. uh, you may have been noticing this beautiful painting behind us. And we have the artist here with us. So yeah. Here we go. Thank you, my love. You're welcome. <laughs> so hello, everyone. And we want to welcome Tanya to the show today. We are very blessed here in Ottawa to have an incredibly talented artist. And she is another one of them. We had Pauline Winogram on with us earlier and Steve Winogram. And now we have Tanya, which is fantastic because she is the artist, actually, this beautiful painting of Mary, Mother of Greece. Yes behind us here. And we're going to hear the story about that. But first, we're going to go into a little bit about her Catholic life. So we want you to share with us, what was it like growing up as a child in your Catholic faith and your devotion? Okay, when I was a child, I was very pious. <laughs> I remember praying in front of the statue of Our Lady of Lourdes in St. Anthony's Church in Torino. And um, I was going to Mass and everything. And then in my teenage years, that kind of vanished. Uh -huh. It took uh, to see a relative of mine who was uh, having uh, a serious illness. Okay. For me to start thinking, I'm not in control of my life. Mm. So maybe uh, this God exists and maybe he's not out of fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can call on him and see if um, there will be a healing ah. of this particular relative. And um, so I started to think about um, that. And it's only in 1981 when I had a very serious trial in my life, mm. that I got to meet Father Francis Donnelly of the Companions of the Cross, and um, through a friend of mine. And um, 
he consecrated me to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Wonderful. And he said, from now on, you pray the rosary every day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know how to pray the rosary. I had to buy a booklet and follow the instructions. Oh. But I did faithfully. And uh, I received the grace that I never thought I would receive. Uh -huh. It was just incredible. So I said, gee, she's alive. <laughs> <laughs> alive and well. <laughs> so is God. You know? So from there, um, my faith started to grow. And um, in 1984, I met Father Joe Kane, mm. um, whom I have had as a friend for 33 years until he passed away last year. 33 years. Yes. Even in his last years, I was visiting him in the nursing home oh. because, because uh, that relative of mine, uh, I brought him to a prayer meeting in the charismatic renewal. Yes. And Father Joe prayed over him and he got healed. Ah, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Another healing on the show today we're hearing about. So, um, that made me very grateful to Father Joe, and I was following him everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and so, actually, I typed his book. This is uh, the book of Father Joseph Cain. Let me show that for you. Yes. So it's called Our Light Shines in My Darkness. Right there. Your light. Oh, your light. Sorry. The Jesus light, Your light shines in my darkness. Shines in my darkness. And I typed the manuscript of this book. And he was the exorcist of uh, Ottawa. And uh, he wrote this book because he realized that people were not aware of the dangers that are hidden in the occult. Mm. People just fall into all kinds of habits that are very bad for your soul. Mm. So, um, yeah, so my relative got here and uh, I became a friend of Father Joe Kane. And uh, so that is the reason why uh, just a few months before he passed away, I had uh, this prayer that Father read. Let me show that too. Uh, I had it published so that people can protect themselves with the precious blood of Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful. Because the prayer, that's what it speaks about. That's very important. So, what else would you like to know? Yes, yes. So, we wanted to hear about your childhood and then what happened to you and how she came back to the faith. And it made me think about this scripture from the Word of God. And... Um, let me just see here. 22.6, Proverbs 22.6. Here it is. Proverbs 22.6. So if you have your Bible at home, this might be one. If your parents out there, you're still praying for your children to come back to the faith, please be encouraged because we have another wonderful sister here who has done that in her life. So Proverbs 22.6, and it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So that's what happened. That's what happened to Tanya. So again, that's Proverbs 22, 6. You can try to memorize it. You can pray to memorize it. You can write it down, put it on your mirror in your bathroom. There's so many different ways to get the word of God into us so that it can keep coming to your mind, especially if you're still praying for your children to come back to the church or back to the faith. Okay, so now let's talk about Mary Mother Freeze. Well, when did you become an artist? When did you start doing all this drawing and things in your life? Oh, actually, I... Um... <laughs> When I was very young, I was a manager in a boutique okay. in Montreal. And there was a lady who knew an artist. And she saw me always uh, drawing faces and things. So she said, you should meet my friend, the artist, and um, do some painting. Yeah. Because, well, she found I had a talent. Great. So I did. And um, in those days, I was doing landscapes and things like that. But then, you know, I had children, I had to work very hard, and uh, I didn't paint for many years. Mm. And it's only when I retired that um, I said, well, 
maybe I should um, do some painting. And I started to do some abstract, a portrait of Russell Crowe, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite actor. <laughs> and um, then I became uh, a member of a Divine Mercy prayer group. Uh, it's called the Divine Mercy Seneca. Wonderful. There are many in Ottawa. Yes. And it's a wonderful way of learning uh, from the diary of St. Faustina, from Holy Scripture, and from um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's a wonderful, wonderful way of learning about our faith. And so I was in the group for three, four years before that passage dawned on me in the diary. I yes. think you have the diary. Yes. Number 1585. And again, this is the Diary of St. Faustina, Divine Mercy in My Soul, and it is entry number 1585. Did you want to read what you have there? Sure, oh, I can. Yes, sure. Do you want me yeah, to read go it? ahead, sure. From the Diary of St. Faustina, number 1585. A vision of the Mother of God in the midst of a great brilliance. Uh -huh. Okay. I saw the mother of God clothed in a white gown, girt about with a golden cincture, and there were tiny stars also of gold over the whole garment, and chevron-shaped sleeves lined with gold. Her cloak was sky blue, lightly thrown over the shoulders. A transparent veil was delicately drawn over her head while her flowing hair was set off beautifully by a golden crown, which terminated in little crosses. Huh. Then she looked at me kindly and said, I am the mother of God of priests. She raised her right hand heavenward and said, O oh God, bless Poland, bless priests. Now, since the messages in St. Faustina's diary are for the whole world, we can say with confidence, O oh God, bless this country, bless priests. And I have the imprimatur of the Archbishop um, saying that this is okay. So I pray for Canada and for Italy. <laughs> Let's guess. Italy is your hometown, exactly. your home country. <laughs> yes. Oh, that is, that is really beautiful. And again, we see the image here. And you have little cards also that you have available. Okay. Let's show them that. Okay, so here we go. Here's her cards here. And uh, she has them available if anyone would like to have them and hand them out. How do people get a hold of you? Oh, well, I actually had uh, the printer uh, printed on the card that they can uh, purchase them directly. Perfect, perfect. From Ottawa Print here in Ottawa. Okay, Ottawa Print here in Ottawa. If they mention what this is, they'll know. Well, I also put uh, E11813, which means English, yes. and the project 11813. Okay, great. So, so they will know. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Now, the reason of these cards is because when I was painting it and I was writing, oh God, bless this country, bless priests, I said, well, people should pray for our country and their priests. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, the inspiration came to have the prayers of St. Faustina oh, yes. written for priests, for our country, something addressed to the Blessed Virgin, and then I added something, a word that is consoling, because when we see what's happening in the world, sometimes we get uneasy. Ah. So I put at the end, again from the diary, Jesus reminds us, the world is not as powerful as it seems to be. Its strength is strictly limited. Okay. By God. Yes, yes. Oh, good, good, good. So, oh, another thing. Yes, do share. <laughs> before, I, before I could have these holy cards, yes. I had to ask permission from 
the variants of the Immaculate Conception in the United States because they have the copyright of the Diary of St. Faustina. Right. So it is written here also that I have that permission. All right on. And then my first uh, donor was a mother superior and she wouldn't give me the donation <laughs> if I didn't have the imprimatur of my archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get the imprimatur. Well, you went through, you did all the proper steps. And That's Tanya, right. we are blessed to have you and we're blessed with these prayer cards. And thank you, thank you for being on the show today. And also in that entry of, of the diary of 1585, I just want to mention that it also says here that uh, Mother Mary also said to her, tell the priests what you have seen. Yeah. So now we also have all seen what she would have looked like uh, painted by Tanya. So thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. Okay, God bless you, my dear sister. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, yes. Mille <laughs> grazie. And we're just so blessed to have a representation of the priesthood here. And I just think it's amazing. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> it really is amazing. Yeah, how an honor privilege yeah no it's it's beautiful yeah. and really just the whole show today the way it's rolled out it just really feels divinely orchestrated and i thought maybe you could share a little bit about what's so special about tomorrow night as we yeah the <laughs> the trade home or just tomorrow night the, the institution of the holy orders the priesthood uh any personal anecdotes you might have just uh yeah sure well, I, as a priest, uh, I know even as a, as a seminarian, or going back as far as being an altar boy in, in North Bay, at uh, the cathedral in North Bay, the Pro Cathedral, uh, with uh, uh, then Bishop Alexander Carter, God rest his soul, uh, who I dare say was instrumental in my later years in desiring to become a priest. Mm. Uh, and watching all these things happen as a young uh, boy, a high school student, with a friend of mine, uh, his name was Danny Vilnev, we were altar servers at the uh, cathedral. And we would be at the cathedral all of Holy Week for those three years in high school that we, in my later years, right. and seeing everything unfold, and then being at the Chrism Mass and all the stuff with the priests and so on and so forth. And over the years as a seminarian, I started to experience that from a different perspective. And of course, then as a priest and throughout my military career, and now I'm retired, and uh, having been again to the Chrism Mass uh, last night here at the cathedral with uh, His Grace our Bishop Pentecost. Uh, his Grace, uh, the new Archbishop uh, Nuncio for uh, Armenia and, or Georgia and Armenia, mm. uh, His Grace Archbishop Bethencourt, who's a week a week old as a bishop. God uh, bless wow. him. And of course, uh, Archbishop or a Bishop uh, uh, Reisbeck. And there was another bishop there, and I didn't know his name. I don't know. I'm sorry. But all the priests were there, and they celebrated the, they celebrated the feast day of the priest, uh, the Chrism Mass, because of, with the oils and getting ready for wow. Holy Thursday. Um, and the jubilarians that were there, some guys who priests for 60 years, including his grace, Archbishop uh, Marcel Gervais. So he's really? 60 years a priest this year. So uh, oh. bless him and his ministry and all of our brother priests. So we come together and of course at the Chrism Mass, we bless the oils and we recommit, uh, we re uh, to uh, the bishop, our promises from our ordination. And then so come Holy Thursday, where we have the institution of the Blessed Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood, uh, and it's a more formal sense, uh, through the washing of the feet. Mm. And this, this moment in that service. Mm. <laughs> As a priest, it's extremely humbling because... Uh, you know, sitting there, you're washing someone's foot, and someone's, well, that's just a minor thing, you know, why get emotional about it? But mm. if, as my brother priest would testify, you know, you, you fall in love with your priesthood mm. because you fall in love with who it is you're called to be in the midst of the people that you're called to serve. Mm. And so for me, uh, the way the Holy Thursday unfolds with uh, certainly that moment at the beginning with the washing of the feet and then celebrating the, the uh, the Eucharist after, these two moments that happened at the Last Supper are so intimate to the priesthood uh, because it is a ministry of service. Mm. And, and the service, of course, 
shown through the washing of the feet uh, of uh, whoever this you know may come to have their foot washed, uh, or uh, then I should say after with the offering of the Eucharist. Mm. In a sense, it's almost like like a first mass, right. because you've now moved from this thing of service, which you, the moment of service would be called to by virtue of your priesthood. And that to do this one particular thing, in, especially, is to celebrate Mass, consecrate the bread and wine of the gifts of the people, and the Lord consecrates it as the body and blood of Christ, and as a priest, then to distribute that back to the people. Yes. And uh, it is my hope here, and I'm certainly you know where it's possible, that one of the great symbols of Holy Thursday is the reception of Eucharist under both species. Right. Because of it's that, that sign of institution, so if parishes are able to do that, mm. where they don't do it normally, um, I'm, I know the church encourages them you know, to make that happen, and we're going to do that this year here at Blessed Sacrament. Because of everything that it represents, everything that it is, Yes. Right, it represents that totality of service, that totality of, the, of even the people of God who come to be fed by God, take and eat, take and drink, mm. and you know, and as a priest to be the one who stands there in persona Christi at that particular point, and to have all that happen and unfold before you, uh, it's 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 amazing. It's 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 awesome, <laughs> and it's terrifying at the same time because. I'm, I'm conscious of my own sinfulness uh, at that moment, uh, at any time I celebrate Mass. And, but, but, you know, so you're, you're doing that and you're, you're looking at the host. And, of course, when you have the beautiful hosts that we have here, that we have that have the emblems on them, sometimes it's a crucifixion or the lamb or whatever different things you look at. I'm looking at this, and I'm just like, it's incredible. Wow. You know, yeah. so yeah, it's it's a very emotional moment for me, and, and I have to be conscious sometimes because if I get into the moment too much, <laughs> I become silent. It's like I'm celebrating mass by myself, and I realize I got a whole congregation out there. Father, we're here. You know, speak up. So uh, that that's what happens. The, the host draws you in yes. uh, when you realize, you know, the fact that these these broken, sinful hands, you know, I deign to to, to caress our Lord. And one thing that you probably have noticed that where it comes down to that part after after the Our Father, yeah. and then you have the embolism, and then you have the the prayer delivers sword from every evil, and then the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Then you have the other prayer that Jesus or the priest says, Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles. Well, for me, uh, when I say that prayer, of course, I'm looking right at the Eucharist because right. that's Christ right there. Right. So I'm speaking to Him right. within the hearing of everybody else. And then comes the sign of peace. So it's a double dialogue in a sense. Right. I'm talking to our Lord present of the Eucharist, and everyone else hears me saying that. And then from that moment, it says, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And of course, the Lord is, you know, sacramentally, body and blood, soul and divinity, present right there on the altar. I've never thought about that that dialogue piece before. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, yeah. that's amazing. Well, please take the time to thank your priest. And we thank God for the gift of the priesthood. There'd be no sacraments without the priesthood. So uh, glory to God. May you have an incredible Holy Week. And please begin your Divine Mercy Novena on Friday. Next week, we actually have Keith and Peggy Doucette from the John Paul II Center for Divine Mercy here in Ottawa, wow. which is going to be very, very special as we all uh, go forward to Divine Mercy Sunday. So that's going to be great. So anyways, I'll ask my wonderful wife to come back. And I'm sorry. The candle. Oh, the candle. I don't know about the candle. The, uh, Father, is Father going to tell me about the candle? Yeah, well, the candle, well, when I was in, in Poland oh. a number of years ago on a pilgrimage, and we were at the shrine uh, outside of uh, Krakow. Uh, we... Uh, went to the shrine there, and so I picked up that candle there. And I, so every year, Divine Mercy, especially during the novena, I'll have that candle burning and that. But I keep it, of course, right now with the relic. During my prayer, I'll light the candle. So it's uh, yeah, so just a Divine Mercy candle from, from the shrine in Poland. Wow. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you for bringing it, Father. Yeah. Pleasure. Oh. All right. Here we go. So as we come to the end of our show for this week, and, of course, prepare ourselves to fully enter into the triduum in the middle of this Holy Week, I'm going to offer this prayer. It's uh, for graces through the intercession of St. Faustina. So let us pray in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
O Jesus, who filled St. Faustina with profound veneration for your boundless mercy, deign, if it be your holy will, to grant us, through her intercession, the grace which we fervently pray. I invite you at this time to offer any prayers that you have in your heart. Our sins render us unworthy of your mercy, but be mindful of Sister Faustina's spirit of sacrifice and self-denial and reward her virtue by granting the petitions which, with childlike trust, we present to you through her intercession. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. John Marie Vianney, patron of priests, pray for us. Mary, queen of priests, pray for us. May Almighty God bless you wherever you are this day, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth proclaiming the gospel by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessed and holy Easter. Thank God you, Father. You. Welcome. God bless everybody. Bye.